uh, see, originally I, I was very much in favor of the Bohr interpretation, which seemed at that time the best. And the, uh, uh, it's very subtle and hard to explain, but basically it, it emphasizes this wholeness of the observing instrument and what is observed, that they are one whole and they are one phenomenon. And now the thing he... Uh, and, and many of the lines which he, many of the things which he says would be on the lines which I have just talked about, right? That's why it attracted me. Now, the, uh, uh, I won't go into more detail about it because it's very difficult, but the, um, uh, the, the, the one thing I feel I didn't quite agree with was that he said that this whole was completely, uh, there was no way of making a concept of this whole, you see. And that meant that you could not make it intelligible. You could only, the mathematics would only refer to the probable results of experiments, would not discuss what is actually happening. Right? Hmm. Now, uh, so I developed in, uh, later in 1951 or thereabouts uh, another interpretation where I said that the electron is a particle, for example. And then it has a field, what well, I call a quantum field, represented mathematically by its wave function. And this field and the particle are together, and they, they account for the properties, the quantum properties of the electron. It's a new kind of field, right? Now, what was... See, we know classically we have many fields, like the electric and magnetic field. The magnetic field, for example, you see iron filings showing how it spreads through space. The electric field, the electromagnetic field, makes radio waves radiating through space, and... So, but the quantum field is different. It has some similarities, but it's different because the effect of the quantum field depends only on the form and not on the intensity, you see. If you think of a water wave, it's spreading out. If the cork is bobbing, the more it spreads out, the less the cork bobs. Now, the quantum field would be capable sometimes of spreading out, and the electron far away could move with the same energy as if it were close. This would be a kind of explanation of this discrete quantum process. <laughs> So you have a field that doesn't drop off when you go to The towards. field drops off, but its effect does not, you see. The effect depends only on the form, right? Not on the intensity. That's weird. It's not so weird. In fact, it's very common, but <laughs> we, we generally don't pay attention to it, you see. <laughs> you see, if you take, for example, a radio wave, it, it, its effect falls off. Now imagine a ship guided by radar on an automatic pilot. The guidance does not depend on the intensity of the wave. <laughs> depends only on the form, which carries, we may say, carries information. The word information has the two words in form, to put form in, right? So what, it's, it's like if you have a television set and, and you go far away from the mm. antenna that, or, or the, mm. the place where they put out the broadcast, yeah. it doesn't mean that you don't get the broadcast, you mm. just need a, a bigger More receiver. Sensitive receiver, that's all, you see. So as long as it's received, it's essentially the same program, you see. So what happens is that the that the form of the radio wave puts form into the currents flowing in the receiver, right? The energy comes from the receiver, not from the radio wave, right? The radio wave is not pushing the ship around mechanically. The ship is moving under its own energy, you see, and responding with the form. So the radio wave is guided, it's, uh, and, and, uh, form uh, is giving shape and form to its motion, you see. So this goes back to an old idea of Aristotle saying that a form that can be a formative cause as well, right? Now, the, um, uh, uh, now this, uh, this is very common. We have it not only in radio. See, the computer has a form which is carried out in the uh, process. Of, you know, it may run machinery. Uh, you, you can have uh, um, DNA. The form of the DNA determines, uh, is carried to the RNA and determines the making of proteins uh, and so on. It's a very and in all human experience, you see, people generally don't push each other, pulling each other around, except when they're violent. They depend on the form of the sound waves to communicate, and the, the people move around because of that, you see. So uh, the point is that this is the most common form of experience, and the mechanical business of pushing and pulling is more limited, but uh, our experience of the past few centuries has led us to focus on that as the main point, right? And saying we can always explain the other thing through that, but... I'm saying maybe it's uh, that this form is fundamental and that the electron responds with this form, you see. Hmm? Now, that explains not only... Uh, it explains the interference, it explains why the electron acts like a wave, and it explains this non-local business and so on. And 
explains the superconductivity as the electrons moving by a common pool of information, just as the ballet dancers do, <laughs> and so on. So, the uh, 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 now, uh, so that that means we have a quite a different principle of explanation because this wave function, which operates through form, is closer to life and mind. You see, the basic quality of mind is that it responds to form and not to substance, right? <laughs> And therefore, an electron has a mind-like quality, though it may not be con it's almost certainly not conscious in the sense we know, but uh, consciousness may depend on much higher organization of this mind-like quality. <laughs> so we could say it may, it may have many new mind-like uh, fields could arise, which we don't know, you see, uh, in the human being or in life or in animals. So what you're saying is that the physical universe is really more about information than about substance? Well, I'm saying it's both, but information uh, uh, contributes fundamentally to the qualities of substance. <laughs>